Ladies and gentlemen, this countdown on for Ayodhya, a countdown on for the Ram Mandir Temple re-inauguration after all these centuries. The re-emergence of a physical spot in a holy city which is of the three holy sites of the Hindu faith. Now for all these months, you have been seeing visuals of the Ram Mandir, of where it is reached, of the construction. Now we are here to have and start a conversation of the entire city of Ayodhya and of the entire region, of the entire district and beyond because something of such scale is about to happen that I do not think we are comprehending. Here is a reality check ladies and gentlemen, 5 million people every year visit the Vatican in Rome. Between 5 and 9 million people a year travel to Ma Vaishnu Devi. Between 3 and 5 million people every year travel to Mecca for the Hajj. What is going to be needed in Ayodhya, not just the temple site, you are going to need highways and hotels and eateries and upgraded airports and flights and interstate bus terminals. You are going to require the facility to make Ayodhya into one of the biggest travel destinations in the world with the Ram temple of course being at the center point but not of course the only point. All that infrastructure now needs to be created. Now you are seeing a map of uh, uh, roughly a map of Ayodhya uh, on your screens where you can see and I am pointing this out, I am going to leave this on air, uh, where the airport which is being developed specific fit for purpose for this particular inauguration because we now need to be uh, 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 aware and available of how to travel there. Uh, as we speak Indigo and other airlines have now announced special flights. The government is announcing special trains. More parking facilities are being built. So much so that the organizers of the 22nd event are now telling people that it is better you celebrate the 22nd in your temples, in your hometowns because of the sheer scale of people who are expected to attend. Now ladies and gentlemen, I do not know how many people are going to show up on the 22nd. I do not know uh, how many people are going to show up on the 23rd, okay. But I do know that when the Kumbh Melas are organized in this country, when a Kumbh Mela is organized in this country and you understand that some Kumbh Melas are rare, uh, they happen once every 100 years, some happen once every 12 years. But when the rare Kumbh Mela is organized, this is happening for the first time in 500 years. Okay? The last time a Kumbh Mela was organized, 50 million people showed up. I can't explain to you the scale of that which means all of Delhi and all of Tokyo and all of London packed their bags and travelled, everyone. So we are not registering the scale of what is happening and what will be required to happen other than just of course that the temple should be magnific magnificent. On the broadcast with me is uh, Bala Rao Sankuratri, he is from the Ayodhya Research Institute, Department of Culture, Government of UP, Sadhanand Pawar who is a design expert and Dr. Jaijit Bhattacharya stays on with me, Akar Jindal also stays on with me. Now let me get this information from Balaji. Balaji, we do not know sir, but what are you suspecting is actually going to happen? How many people are going to show up? Rishabh, this is a tough question. Before I go to that, uh, let me thank you for using the word re-inauguration of the Ram Janmabhoomi. That is a very good term. And coming to how many people are going to come, this is a very tough question. Uh, I'm seeing, I am I'm, I'm going to Ayodhya almost every six months like that. And last November I was there. So last November situation in Ayodhya is not just the temple area, right from Faizabad till Ayodhya, everything is under construction. Existing hotels are getting renovated. All the roads are under construction. 
all the hotels are under construction all the restaurants are under construction construction and in the uh, near the temple complex uh, all the shops uh, are getting renovated government itself is making a uniform uh, structure for all the shops in front of the temple it is huge and massive uh, and uh, too many calls we are getting for the temple uh, uh, when can we go to the temple all this stuff and through you and to the world i just want to say that 22nd 23rd is the inauguration but for the general public the temple will be open from 26th not from 22nd 22nd 23rd is only the prana pratishtha programs are happening and for the general public the temple is only from 26th uh, and uh, okay uh, it's I, it's it's a good problem to have but again note that thought general public 26th okay now it's a good problem to have but i don't think we are registering the scale of the of a once in a 500 year event i i don't know how with okay so the, uh, for reference to context ladies and gentlemen the temple itself is being built at a cost of about about 2000 crores okay the entire infrastructure project just in the public sector are worth 60000 crores and i'm not talking about the the person who is doing his own shop because that's private sector you're talking about in the scope of the next few weeks the culmination of potentially 1 lakh crores of rupees being pumped into the economy of the region we are seeing something beginning that has historical significance for many reasons and i've discussed the historical significance of the temple itself we've been discussing it for months i wanted to register this for a second uh, dr bhattacharya sir i mean it's impossible to predict i can only take away that when the when the when in the month of ramadan about 3 million people come to mecca okay uh, in the in the kumbh mela 50 million people come for that once in century event uh, to a particular venue for a few weeks uh, vishnu devi about 5 million people a year so you know how do we gauge what's going to happen next month so let me put another statistics for people to understand the magnitude of the event the total number of passengers being managed by the indira gandhi national airport uh, in national airport which is the biggest in india is about 63 million so you see the total passengers that one one of the largest airports in india manages and the key air, the international airport manages is what descended on uh, in in um, uh, in in this festival in um, up uh in one single day the 50 million figure that you're talking about yeah uh so that entire um, you know traffic of one year came down in one single day <clears throat> which means that there was pressures on local transportation pressure on food pressure on water pressure on ensuring there is no disease outbreak there is no cholera outbreak and so on and so forth and that uh was pulled out in a uh, extremely smooth manner during the last kumbh mela that happened uh clearly uh we expect a much larger number for ayodhya given the you know weight that was there uh, you know from the population for a long time so um the challenges will be much more from a logistical perspective from the pressures on the municipality where will these people stay as you rightly said it's uh, it's multiple cities coming together so where will these people stay where are the hotels okay. where are the you know, dharmshalas uh, it's a mind boggling problem but i'm pretty confident that the government of up and the indian government together will be able to pull this off okay and i think there's some good advice that um, uh people should be able to celebrate this sitting back uh, you know wherever they are okay. rather than actually converging so to okay ayodhya. here's a reality check uh, ajay jit the current ayodhya airport which is an as mentioned in faizabad okay uh has the capacity to only land nine seater aircraft okay they're upgrading it and the upgradeation upgraded part is going to be inaugurated by the prime minister on the 30th of december so in a couple of weeks time Uh, but even that airport is not going to be big enough so we're looking at i mean think about it the people who up until one year ago or two years ago before the supreme court judgment had you know in broken down shops or a small plot of land or a flat in ayodhya they are about to see a 1 lakh crore capital infusion into their area i can't make you understand how much money 1 lakh crores is okay it's let's put this in perspective uh the entire union exchequer's budget would be around that 25 30 lakh crore mark okay and you're talking about 1 lakh crore being put into one 
not a very large city by Indian standards. It's not as large as, as Bombay or Delhi are, okay? It's a staggering amount of things that you're about to see happen. Let me, okay, let me get Mr. Pawar into this conversation. Mr. Pawar, from the interstate bus terminals to the, I mean, you need an airport at least the size of the Lucknow airport, if not the size of the Delhi airport. You're going to require parking facilities. I mean, I remember we were, when, when we did the Commonwealth Games here, we were running short of hotel space. They came up with these bed and breakfast policies. We had a flyover in the flyover in Barapulla over here. Okay. You're looking at a different scale of operations and time is short. Pawarji. Hello. Yes, no, Pawarji. I, I lost you. Uh, yeah, Pawarji, last... you're looking at a huge scale of operations in terms of hotel rooms, eateries, parking places, buses, planes. Yeah, the time is short, sir. Are we, are, we, are we going to be able to process this year? I know it's a good problem to have, but nonetheless, it's a problem. Yes, uh, I think we had a, a few conversations in the past also on the same parameters. Any change which is happening for uh, you know event like this, uh, there are the practical challenges. But as uh, Jajit said some time back, Kumbh Mela, I remember, which happened a few years ago at Nasik, people were anticipating a huge crowd and huge mess, but uh, rather fortunately, nothing of that sort happened. But the kind of a statistics what we have as a consultancy arm within this work corporation is that at the moment, infrastructure-wise, you will be surprised to know that only we are targeting or we are having a, uh, rather the facility available, which is not even 50% what is required. My worry is that 47% is the actual uh, consumption which we can have adaptation on those two particular days. But over and above that, the balance 50% crowd, which we are going to be expecting, uh, there is going to be a huge challenge and that may uh, surpass the expectations in terms of the hygiene or in terms of the travel management or in terms of logistics. You name anything and everything that is there. But I'm sure this government is trying to cover up that within such a short span of a time, whatever they could. And I'm sure in the last, uh, you know, nine years of their operation, they have done... Okay, I, it's going to be the biggest exercise for the UP government ever. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, Indigo is, as I mentioned, started flights. Special tra trains are being announced, but a large amount of people are going to come by road. Okay. Uh, from all over the country, uh, which means buses, which means cars, which means parking. Uh, all of these now need to be figured out and they need to be figured out at the scale of the cum. Now, the UP government officials have expertise in organizing the KUM. So, they, they, they know how to do these things. But all that expertise is going to be tested here because you don't know. You can tell people, but how are you going to stop them? It's a once in a 500 year event. Now, Im imagine if Mecca was being inaugurated next month. It would be a global once in a millennium event. Okay? It's a huge, huge deal. Uh, look at this uh, Vatican, average 25,000 visitors per day. 25,000 is going to be pittance uh, compared to what's going to happen on the, 20, on the 22nd through as, and as we mentioned, 26th when the, when the doors open. Uh, you know, Vaishnu Devi, which, uh, which we, you know, which you, which you go to, you know, you, even though these are well, you know, Tirupati, there are long-standing operations, you know, with uh, decades of uh, expertise in doing this. All of this will have to be all of this will have to be created from day one. You don't have decades to figure it out. Okay. From day one, you'll have those numbers. It's going to be fascinating. Akajindal, but I'm going to talk about largely of the economy, not just the logistics of it. A lack of crore rupees for sure is being injected into Ayodhya as we speak. The ancillary ripple effect, what is it going to be? If somebody had a small flat in Ayodhya, you can easily imagine that it will be 4 guna, 5 guna, to ho gaya come January to come to that. Now, now I have been tracking real estate in this country. My organization, Akash Indal, got in. I was about to throw this question. Which is the city in India where real estate acquisition has been the fastest? According to my data, it's neither Delhi, nor Mumbai, nor Bengaluru. It's Ayodhya and around. Real estate has been so much. And I'm so happy to hear all my colleagues and you discuss the problem that there will be so many people that, I mean, the term which is being used for problem, that, that, but see, the impact which is going to have on the economy. 
particularly the thing which has not been discussed till now, the forex which is going to get. Because the Indian diaspora, see we are talking about Indians, but Indian diaspora globally is now very strong. US, Canada, Gulf, Australia, Singapore, so many people, so many devotees are waiting to come to this temple. So the sea of forex, not a forex generation, India would have just because of this huge opportunity. The only piece of advice uh, from me is that, of course, people shouldn't come on one day or within one week. They should come on a staggered way because Ram Mandir is going to be there for Darshan forever. It's such a huge thing. It's a, such a good thing which has happened. So I think as far well as the economy is concerned, it's going to have a huge, huge impact on Indian economy. Now, tourism means everybody job, job. People have been talking about unemployment, all of the things. We have seen so many unpleasant things uh, related to unemployment. But now this would be a huge employment. Okay, but Akajandar, how should we how should we develop it? Okay, because there is there is I mean the the yatras, for example, Vaishnu Devi, uh, Badrinath, Kedarnath, they by definition have been preserved and kept difficult. Okay, because the nature of the nature of the of the bhakti is supposed to be ये नहीं है कि आप सीधा वहाँ पर अपना luxury private jet download वहाँ से पहुँच के अंदर घुस जाओ. Okay. So they've been, even though infrastructure and safety has improved, uh, toilets and facilities and foods and things like that that have been added. But it's not like you made made a made an eight lane eight lane eight lane highway. You have to still walk to walk to Vaishnu Devi. Very few uh, of these choppers operate, or you have to take a take a you know a, a palki or you know to get on a horse. So it's not easy. So but what should it? Should we have the ability in Ayodhya, literally from the sansthan and the dormitories? To people who want to come and bring private jets, we should open it up. Why not? No, why, why should we make it difficult? I, I understand your point of view that I am myself a devotee of Vaishnu Mata that one has to climb 12, 13 kilometers. But it should be very convenient because uh, senior citizens, everybody should be allowed to travel. So I think, yes, all the facilities should be there because now technology is taking place everywhere. Now all facilities or amenities, automation is happening everywhere in every sphere of life. Why not here? So we should let maximum people have the benefit of darshan. Now see, think about those people who are in 70s. Now since early 90s, they have been thinking about that, that Ram Mandir would be built, it would be inaugurated, and they are waiting, yeah. they waited for 25 yeah. years. You're, you're going to have somebody, have some questions. people who's, yeah, very well, it could be the last wish could be uh, that, you know, uh, uh, while I'm still around, I want to go and see an Ayodhya, and I can't wait six months, eight months. Uh, so I'm in a rush to do it, and, th and that puts the puts the logistical and infrastructure pressure. D Jajit, what is your estimation? Uh, you know, back of the envelope of the of the sheer amount of ripple effect that is going to be pumped into this economy uh, in in and around Ayodhya over the next few months. Right. I mean, for a second, I thought you were going to ask me about the estimate of number of people who will land up. And I've all, got all the best idea. with that. I, I have no estimate. I can only give you. Uh, the, these these logics from other places, but it could, it could be anywhere between 3 and 50 million. Absolutely. But in terms of the economic impact, it will be very, very significant, not just to UP, because what needs to be developed is not just the Ayodhya tourism infrastructure, but in the entire Ram circuit, which goes across Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, right down to Tamil Nadu and Kerala and so on. So it has to be uh, you know looked at as a Ram circuit uh, from a plain tourism uh, perspective. Because people would like to start the journey uh, from Ayodhya and then go to the other key places that um, Sri Ram went to as per uh, the legend. Uh, and I think uh, therefore the tourism has to be developed as a cross-state tourist tourism and not just a city-focused tourism. Um, also, uh, it will lead to other kinds of um, you know tourism. For example, Ayodhya is also developing one of uh, the largest mosques that's coming up. And what I understand, it's a architecturally a very beautiful uh, building that's being created and that is also going to attract uh, a lot of tourism yeah. so we see two sets of uh, you know tourists coming in and we need to leverage that so that they just don't stay in ayodhya but they also go around they also buy um, you know things which are related to tourism and expand on that aspect and also with all the infrastructure coming up which is you know the hoteling industry the infrastructure the travel infrastructure there should be industries also coming up which could be related I mean, industry. I mean, yeah, just no, just even directly involved. I mean, think of uh, about think about Ajmer Sharif. Okay, think about the temple towns and the guy who's selling mithai outside, the guy who's selling chadars outside, the guy who's selling uh, you know uh, flowers outside, uh, the the priests who are there to perform, the tour guides who are required over there. You're talking about a, you know 
literally recreation of a major religious site of the world i frankly don't think any of us are fathoming what this will be this will this will be unrecognizable in 5 5 to 6 years so let me get balaji back into this conversation uh, uh, balaji now for people who are residents of ayodhya who are who have been living there all these all these years what are you what are you seeing happening you say you travel there often what are you seeing happening for them i have a friend there who lives very close to the temple and now he he's trying to shift his house to lucknow uh and having that uh, his existing house only as the guest house or something like that so uh, uh and like how you said uh, as controlling and managing the crowd i feel that the the best management that can now be done is how fast when a pilgrim enters into ram temple how fast he is going to come out yeah it all depends upon that if the person is entering into the ram temple complex and if he is taking hours together to come out then the stagnation is going to be and everything is going to pile up if if the person is able to come out faster then there are other avenues that people can plan landing in lucknow or uh, prayagraj or uh, ayodhya itself they can have a day tour instead of uh, spending uh, finding a hotel or whatever yeah so the, so just like yeah. vaishnu devi the darshan needs to be quick you can come and then you can hang out in the complex and yes. go to the hills and the parks and you know in the and the lake that is being created but the darshan needs to be super quick yes okay yeah and you know and then of course then you'll have you i mean imagine next diwali in ayodhya okay that's yes. going to be another 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 huge very deal very frankly speaking last diwali for last diwali for the guinness book of world record what happened there for that itself it's a huge traffic jam almost for 4 5 kilometers there were no vehicles moving yeah people have to park the vehicles around 4 kilometers away and then walk down yeah we are, we are, we are talking again we talk about scale scale of things uh, uh, let me get mr pawar back in mr pawar for the local economy for people who are native residents of ayodhya okay who been seeing this dispute going on for years and years and years and yeah chali ja raha chali ja raha chali ja raha and suddenly it's over suddenly the temple is being built new highways new uh, 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 hotels new airports it how much of a life changer is this going to be oh it is uh, unimaginable the reason is as uh, bala said some time back few of my connects who were in ayodhya they have already shifted they have got the renovation done to their houses so there would be a huge uh, you know shift but at the same time we as a work corporation we are planning to look out for a 50 key hotel over the last two years you will not believe it sir we have not got a single one even if it is less than 20 30 we are seriously trying to achieve that goal for our hospitality sector we are not getting it so getting back a uh, uh, infrastructure which is required that would take a developmental time of around minimum 2 to 3 years while it settles down but i'm sure the kind of a developments or kind of a control which up government is having in the next 36 days precisely from today they will make the some changes they will make the wonders if china can build uh, you know 6 kilometers of uh, Uh, rather bridge over the sea or over the river within one and a half months so i'm sure we can also do that okay it is a challenge but this we, government we we, we 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 become better at it i mean the indian Absolutely. parliament built less than 2 years okay bharat yes. mandapam just over 3 years uh, exactly. the temple itself remember is being built in what 3 years okay Absolutely. less less than that so but the reason i'm having this telecast is so that there is a public imagination number 1 be aware of the scale of the event when you are making travel preparation don't think ki bhi i'll call up my wahan par subah nikal jayenge 20 tarikh ko aur dekh lenge wahan pahunch ke okay so be aware that it's going to be one of the biggest events probably in the history of human civilization that we know of okay so be aware if you are an entrepreneur be aware of the scale of the economic opportunity that is developing over here across the board okay and if you are an engineer a designer a civic planner okay and if you are related to government you have to think not just about the temple now the temple is being built aa gaya taiyar ho gaya theek hai 30 din reh gaye you now need to think about making ease of living for all the people who want to visit it at the highest possible pace gati shakti is required at an unimaginable scale let's become believers that we can not only build the temple but completely change the face of ayodhya in the next 30 days who knows we might get close 
But if we don't try, it'll never happen. My thanks to my guests. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.